Okay. okay. After that, we will talk about macroscopic energy. In this subsection, the macroscopic form of energy will be discussed in more detail. Okay. So this subsection will be devoted to uh, macroscopic energy. Okay. The first form is kinetic energy, which describes the energy an object contains due to its motion with respect to some reference frame. Okay. So the phrase relative to some reference frame is important. Okay. As illustrated by this example, for example, if you are sitting in a bus, although you have kinetic energy related to a pedestrian standing on the street, okay, because the bus is moving, and if you are standing on the street and watch this bus move, the observer will also observe that you are moving. So you have kinetic energy in this case. But to an observer also inside the bus, the kinetic energy relative to a passenger in the same bus will be zero because both of you are moving with the same speed. Of course, here I will assume that both of you won't move inside the bus, okay? But if all of you, that means the passenger and you, are in the same bus and also stationary inside the bus, then the observer should observe that you have zero kinetic energy, okay? So here, the kinetic energy has the following expression, that is a Ke equal to mv squared over 2. And this expression should be familiar to you because you should have learned this in a elementary mechanics, okay? But in thermodynamics, we usually talk about some of the terms in a unit mass basis. So we would divide this term by m such that uh, we will get this one, okay? So it will be equal to a v squared divided by 2, okay? So this small letter Ke denotes the kinetic energy per unit mass, okay? Note that the units for energy written here will be kilojoule, okay? One is kilojoule, another one is kilojoule per kg. We will use kilojoule here because one joule is very small, especially in the study of thermodynamics, okay? And uh, it's common to convert the units of energy to kilojoule. And uh, here are some reminder is that, well, if you plug in V in terms of a correct SI unit, that is a uh, meter per second, okay? Then the whole term, Okay, the whole term should be in the units of joule. Okay, in order to convert it to kilojoule, you put you plug in the V with the correct SI unit. Okay, and then you calculate the Ke and divide the value by one thousand so that you can convert the unit from joule to kilojoule. Okay. So here is some of the reminder about this kind of unit conversion. Okay. The second form of energy would be a potential energy, which is the energy stored in the system because of its position in an external force field. For example, gravitational field or electric field. Okay? In your elementary mechanics, you may learn there will be two kinds of potential energy. One is the gravitational potential energy, and another one would be the electric potential energy. But in the thermodynamics, we will not talk about electric potential energy. We will talk about gravitational potential energy in this case. So the potential energy is expressed by m times g times ez. Okay? m times g times ez. That would be the potential energy, or we should say the gravitational potential energy. And it's also in the units of kilojoule. Okay? So as I've said, after you plug in all the things in correct SI, you may need to convert it to kilojoule to find the potential energy, okay? And we also have a term that is having the per unit mass basis, that would be this one, PE equal to GEZ. So this PE become independence of the mass, okay? So PE equal to GEZ. Here we also use a small letter to denote that it is a unit mass quantity, okay? Unit mass quantity, okay? But here, I need to remind you something that is, please take note of the difference between macroscopic Ke and the microscopic Ke, okay? For macroscopic Ke, it refers to a bulk as well as an orderly motion of molecules moving towards one direction, just like what an army does, okay? However, microscopic Ke refers to energy carried by the molecules due to the random motion, okay? I've highlighted this word here, random, okay? This kind of energy is disorganized, okay? While the first type of energy will be an organized energy because they move orderly. All of the molecules move orderly, okay? If we only consider the quantity of energy, then uh, they should have no difference. But they are different in terms of the quality. For quality, we will discuss in a further detail in chapter six, okay? But uh, you need to bear in mind about that. So as you can see inside this figure, 
we also have the contrast between the microscopic KE and macroscopic KE. Okay, so read it by yourself. Okay, for a simple compressible system, i.e. no any magnetic, electric as well as surface tension effects, okay? So here I just help you recall the knowledge you have learned in chapter one about the simple compressible system, okay? The total energy stored in the system comprises kinetic potential as well as internal energy, okay? So mathematically, we will have this expression. E equal to U plus KE plus P, okay? We just sum all of the energy terms together. So we have this expression. And this big letter E is the total energy, okay? Well, if we divide both sides by M, that is the mass, then we will get the total energy per unit mass, okay? We will have a small letter E here, which is equal to small U plus small KE plus small PD and we will have this expression about the total energy per unit mass. And one more reminder about the units, it is in kilojoule and this is in kilojoule, okay? Uh, this kind of conversion, we should do it after we have all the terms in terms of joule, okay? So that you can just divide the number by 1000 to convert this unit into kilojoule, okay? There are also two more terms for this uh, subsection. Okay, the mass flow rate is defined as the amount of mass passing through a cross section per unit time. Well, it has a relation with volume flow rate and can be expressed in the following way. That is the M dot equal to rho V dot equal to rho ACV average. Okay, so two V appear simultaneously and this V is what I call the curly V. Okay, and this is what we call the ordinary V. So this curly V is the volume, while this V is the velocity, okay? Bear in mind about that, you need to be very clear about this kind of symbol and you need to distinguish them, okay? So here, let me explain some kind of symbol. Well, you may or may not see the over dot here. The over dot here means the time rate of change, okay? So if I use some of the calculus term, we may write it as dm dt, okay? So that will be the time rate of change. But I need to clarify that this term may not be appropriate to express in this form. I just use a term DMDT so that you are familiar about that. But in general, I would not use DMDT in this case, okay? I will explain that later. So for energy flow rate, we'll have E dot, okay? Again, it will be the time rate of change of energy. So it will be the energy flow rate will be equal to M dot times E m dot times c because this total energy per unit mass remains unchanged so only the mass will have a time rate of change okay and here is a little example that is about the mass and energy flow rates associated with the flow of steam in a pipe of inner diameter d with average velocity of v average so here the cross section area would be pi r square okay would be pi r square ac equal to uh, pi r square but because we usually have the expression given in terms of diameter okay but not the radius so we would substitute this term as a d over 2 to the power 2 so that uh, you will have a pi d square divided by 4 okay pi d square divided by 4 okay got it so for the unit, it has a kilogram per second, while for the energy, we will have a kilojoule per second, or we write it as kilowatt, okay? So that would be section 2.1.2.